All right, what is up guys? It has been so long since I've last done an actual commentary of an actual holy game that I almost can't remember how to do one. Uh oh, we're in trouble for this video, but no. In all seriousness, I'm going to start commentating a little bit differently than I have been in the past. I'm still going to be cut clean kind of commentary, so if you're interested in that, be sure to watch. But I'm also going to start throwing in a little bit more energy. And uh, basically, it doesn't mean I'm going to yell like crazy into the mic, but it means I'm going to have a lot more fun with it and just be a lot more free. If you get my feeling, and no, I'm not sitting here naked in my underpants. That's a good example right there. Just kind of something off the wall, spontaneous, and uh, generally me having fun while commentating the match for you guys. Because I know it gets boring listening to, well, this is what we're doing now, this is what we're doing now, blah, blah, blah. But uh, I'm still going to be commentating on the match, so fear not. Here we go. Let's go ahead and get this thing right on the ball. Here, um... Obviously playing Draven. This is going to be a Draven commentary because I know a lot of you are going to like ask me and have been asking me, how do we play Draven? Well, here you go. One-on-one, -on -one, all you need to know. I'm also going to start, start making my commentaries informative. So, for Draven in lane, pretty much, there you go. Number one tip I can give you right there. You just watched it happen. Use your Q to last it. Now, this doesn't mean crazily push the lane, but you have one of the best AD steroids in the game currently on your queue, so use it. That means put out harass. Look at Graves' health already. There you go. Lane with aggressive lane partners like Eteric, because you know Eteric's going to get up in your face, stun you, and then provide sustain. That's the kind of partners that Draven really, really excels at, is anyone that can get right up in your face, because Draven has to be played really right up in your face. Now, for catching his axes, a lot of people have been asking me, well, how do I catch his axes? And I wanted to really answer this question with a video kind of play-by-play. -play. All right, so the way it works is if you're standing still, your axes are either going to go to the left, to the right, or to right on where you're standing at random. It's, it's never a, never a uh, really coordinated thing. The only time his axes you know exactly where they're going to go are, one, if you walk forward and throw the axe, then the axe is going to lead forward in front of you. If you walk backwards, so if you throw an axe while it's traveling to the target, start walking backwards, the axe is going to land behind you. That's pretty much the best way I can say it right there. And you really have to get a feel for it. What I do, and the easiest way I find to capture these axes and keep catching them repetitively, is just kind of do a circle back. Make a general circle around you, to the left, to the back of you, to the right. You see, like, get a middle image here of a, uh... Let me see if I can pull up a skill. Actually, you know what? He doesn't have a circle skill, so let me just... Here. There you go. Let me just illustrate this with my cursor. So you want to have a circle about right here where you always can double back in. You'll notice me doing it a lot of the time as I'll just walk back or walk in a circular motion. You see me right here as I'm doing it practicing. It's all muscle memory. All you have to do is practice that circular walk and catching his axes will be a breeze for you in no time. And it's kind of a very important mechanic with Draven so you want to get it down pretty fast. Now, see right there, there's a perfect example. You walk up, walk backwards, it leads backwards. Now, for this game, you know, we see we're already 2-0. and uh, Four minutes in, that's great. We already have a K gold advantage, which is excellent. Really, if you have deaths in your game before the seven minute mark, you know something's a little iffy somewhere and needs to be checked out. But, uh, you know, I like to play really aggressively with my Draven most of the time. Okay, 100% of the time. And uh, it works out quite well. Actually, it uh, it really works out superbly well. And it's really the only way I'd recommend playing Draven. I've never really seen a passive Draven. So I don't know. He, I mean, he's a glorious executioner. You're, you've got to be gloriously executioning people now. You can't just be all, oh, I'm going to chop your head off, cat deal. You know, I'm just going to make this a small event. It's got to be something big. You know, you're Draven. You are the best type deal. So, uh, as you can see here, Shaco kind of invading into our jungle, and, uh, we saw him, so our Tarek went out to help. I would have helped, but, um, 
my team was like, oh, never mind, we got it. We already got him. Another tip I can give you guys is uh, use your stand aside. Stand aside is an excellent utility tool for pushing people off of towers or generally directing champions where you want them to go. And stand aside can also be very crucial in saving your life when you're playing Draven. What I mean by this is, uh, let me give you an example here. Volley Bear charging you. You can use stand aside or have your Tarek stun them, whichever one works. But uh, you can use stand aside to push Volley Bear aside. You can have a Shin charging you and push Shin's actual taunt aside. Uh, taunting you rather. So he'll shadow dash at you and you pretty much time it right and you will completely screw over his entire taunt. Now for here, I wasn't going to go back because really going back before uh, at least, I try to always make my backs at least 10 minutes or so, allowing me to get enough CS and really get a good lead. But uh, I knew that I wasn't going back immediately. I was just going to rely on my Tarek to have a little bit of sustain. That's always good, but it's good to have a sustainer in your lane as Raven. But uh, yeah, for, for Draven also, for Ruins, I know I've had a lot of people asking me about, hey man, what Ruins do you use on Draven? I use the my flat AD page, which is pretty much standard for AD carries nowadays. I really don't see a lot of AD carries running armor pins simply because of the dominance AD. Just like flat AD will give you early. And now that you get the AD, or armor pin I should say, from the Masteries. Let me just stop screwing up here. But uh, I run flat AD... Reds, Flat AD Quints, uh, Armor Yellows, and Magic Resist Blues on pretty much all of my uh, all of my AD carries. If you would like to see the pages, you can always hit up my Summoner profile, the Sanity, and look at the AD and AD Carry Mastery page. So here we go. Basically, just. Generally, if nothing's really going on, you just continue your last inning. For this, I'm just kind of auto-attacking, being a complete and utter baddie, which is something you wouldn't do because I'm pushing the lane. But uh, not really too concerned about it at the moment. Just trying to focus on my city, which is pretty much what bottom is. Now here, I started to hit the Volley Bear, but I knew he wasn't going to back off. So you know what I decided? Let's go for the carry. Let's go for the Graves. Using the stand aside to get that movement speed slow. Just kind of backing off, deciding it wasn't really worth it right then. Now I'm noticing Graves is really low on mana, and Graves I know when I play him is very mana hungry. So here comes Volley Bear again, grabbing. I'm going for Volley Bear once again, but here my Tarek makes a smart decision to stun and hit the Graves. The Graves unfortunately stays, so I'm just gonna you know be going on to him, catching that axe, going back on him. You have to remember to catch your axes. There are times when you won't want to. There's actually one gonna be coming up if I remember correctly. And I didn't. Here it looks like a bad situation, but I managed to heal and throw out an axe just to get back. My turret just kinda coming in with really low HP to kinda save me. So here you go, you see about the nine minute mark. And I'm gonna go ahead and make my first back. One because I got a kill. Kills about twenty CS worth of gold. If you didn't know that, that's a very important thing to know. And it really helps you calculate everything out since I've been playing 80 carries massively now for the past couple months I mean it's just it's really a very important thing to know and it helps me keep track of it so I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the scoreboard here and let you guys just look at the scoreboard see what's going on across the map our Victor has a kill I have a kill our Morty Kayser has two kills that is always a great thing when you have a Kayser that's starting getting kills so pretty much not going too well on the enemy team we have about a 2k gold advantage and uh nine minutes in about to be ten minutes in so uh, here we go back to bottom lean gonna pull back off the scoreboard here and alright so I'm pretty much back to roaming on my first back I was able to buy a double Dorans and a pickaxe uh, prioritize damage on Draven very important I see a lot of people building zeal and trying to prioritize crit on him for his passive which gives you extra damage every crit don't do it it just it's not worth it the flat 80 steroid that you have on your Q is amazing and you should be taking full advantage of it to maximize your harassing lane. As you can see, Draves just taking tons of tons of tons of damage. Somebody build me a Triforce. No, but uh Generally just keep harassing, keep your harass strong, and you're gonna win out your lane. 
I mean, Draven has excellent link control, especially if he gets a couple kills on him. And he gets really hard to stop as long as you're good with him. Now, for here, I just decided I was going to pull out two blades, which is really dumb. Because uh, you really only want to pull out two blades in team fights. You never really want to do it in lane or in a fight. You just want to juggle one. As far as for two blades goes, uh, really, there is only one way that you are going to catch two blades at one time. And that is walking forward. If you're rushing after someone, that is when you want your double blades out. And you're committed to a kill. And you're going to go forward no matter what. That's really when you want your double blades out. Which is another mistake that I end up making. Just not really thinking about it. Because I wasn't planning ahead. But, uh... Pretty much... As far as catching them... Normally, when you're not running forward for two blades. It's just... It's really a lot of micromanagement. I'm not gonna lie here, it's tough, especially when you get a lot of attack speed. And generally it's the same as catching one, you know, you just focus on one then the other. But the thing is, you really can miss out a lot on having two of them up. So, unless you really need the extra damage, it's not important. Another thing you can keep in mind is uh, if you can keep attacking, then it's great. Here we have a Pantheon coming in. I go ahead and use my ult. That ult scores me the kill, which is always an, just an extra 20 gold for me, so I start healing. But as I was saying just then, if you use your Q and start attacking tower, it counts towards your, your Q actually resetting and keeping spinning, so you don't have to keep, like, uh, doing any crazy things. Now here, Mia and my AD carry both stay. Now you can see that I'm getting ready to just do work on him, and here's where I screw up. I, he One, he had vision on me. Two, I should have just started straight up attacking him because I would have won him in flat damage. But I freaked out that he had vision on me because I didn't know they had a ward in that brush. And uh, so that was pretty much my bad for not paying attention. So you got to just watch out on that. That would have been a better situation for me to just straight out go on two blades rushing at him. Uh, as far as, like I was saying, as far as two blades for standing still. Really, it's just luck. I'm not going to lie here. If you're not moving forward and you have two blades out, it, there is a possibility that they can come right back on you. And very slim, but it does happen. I've had it happen sometimes, so I'm not going to say anything against it. But another thing I wanted to talk about with that play right here with the Graves was I doubled back to catch my axe, which was a terrible mistake on my part. I should have just slung the other axe at him, and I probably would have scored a kill for it. So I cost myself a kill right there, which is pretty depressing. But hey, it just goes to show, even if someone knows the champion, they still make mistakes, and that's always room for improvement. That's another thing. If you want to improve at League of Legends, always, always look for room for improvement, no matter what it is, no matter how good you get, no matter how, games, how many games you played. Always look for improvement. So, moving on. We are in the lane. Again. <laughs> Just still trying to get the CS. Team fights really haven't started happening yet, so that's pretty much all 80 bottom is, is just farm, farm, farm until the team fights start. Then it gets pretty darn interesting, not gonna lie. I enjoy it because I like the idea of competing against someone in lane and just having something to focus on, you know? For me, last hitting is something that I could always improve on, and it makes me feel useful. Now, Graves has about a two-level uh, advantage on me due to those double kills. Due to the double kill, I should say, and the amount of time he's been in lane versus me. Whereas I've been going back buying items. But, uh, that does happen, and also it's because we've been pushing our my lane like all new tomorrow. So you can see me just kind of completely walking out of XP range. Just being Draven, you know, doing whatever I please. Killing whomever I please. And, um, also, I've been noticing this. I've been actually discussing this with a couple friends of mine, because I'm more, uh... When you play with me on League, you'll, you'll know. But, uh... I'm more of a... Hmm... What would be the word? Excited! I'm more of an excited guy when I play League of Legends. So, uh, I'm going to start trying to convey that a lot better. One of the things I do, I screw around with voices sometimes. Just messing around with my friends. And, uh, I seem to enjoy it, so I'm going to start putting that in a couple videos. 
And back to the commentary. Pantheon ganked Arlene uh, <laughs> with the man drop. Uh, it was my bad. I heard him. You know, he was practically screaming at me. Hey, hey, sanity, move. And I was like, oh, shoot. It's one of my freeze up derp derp moments that I just get kind of tunnel vision. Not going to lie. But we did get a tower down, so hey. And we didn't anyone die, so that's always a good thing. I think we could have pulled off a couple kills, but uh, I'm just a slow tard sometimes. Can't really help it. So I'm Victor, completely doing work at mid, and I'm going back to buy some items. Very important. Itemization, folks. Itemization. All right. Getting a BF sword, and let's see what's going on up here. Oh, yes. They got into a fight. I remember this. They got into a fight, and I got raged at for leaving. Which, they were correct, it was my fault. I did leave, and I did cause both of them to die. Which I still feel terrible about to this day. In fact, I feel so terrible about it, that I'm just gonna come down and save my Tarek. Because, uh, you know, no one messes with my Tarek. No one. So, there's one kill, and bam! Victor comes in for the second kill. So, they end up getting a two-for-one trade, which actually ends up being in our favor, despite all the rage mode. Now here you can see we have a word out. I do know Shaco's up there doing the wolves, but I'm, at this point I'm just like, oh, free farm. So I'm going back to farm. I like farming. I can't help it. Another thing that I do that you really shouldn't do is auto-attacking. I do a lot of auto-attacking, especially as the game gets later on, but hey, I like to push. Now I knew Shaco was coming for me. They told me. It was my derp. Now if you watch here, I actually hit him with that first one. So he was actually lower than his clone was, and I didn't notice it at the time. But, uh, so I now know which one's him off that and figured it out. And I pretty much managed to successfully guide him. I don't die, but I was still a little bit disappointed. But watch this as the Pantheon comes with a man drop and kills him. Always worth it. Unfortunately, I thought Pantheon was going to double back a little quicker. But that's cool because Pantheon's still coming up behind. We're waiting. And here we go straight on to Graves. And Graves gets utterly molested. Now, Pantheon does kind of leave me. And I'm getting raped by Volley and screaming for old dear God. But Victor comes in and saves my rear end. So, so much love for the Victor. Not even gonna. Not even gonna. Just, no. Not even gonna go down that path. Saving my life. Our Mordekais are just doing work at top, destroying towers. So this is pretty much where the game just, you know it's going to be over pretty quickly at this point when you have a uh, substantial gold lead and about double the kills. You you pretty much by this point know the game is up, about over type deal. Uh, I have acquired in, Infinity Edge in 18 minutes. So 18, almost 19 minutes. So that's all right. I always try to shoot for the 15 minute mark with the Infinity Edge, just off the of kills and farming alone. Uh, 25 minutes maximum. I just I can't see on any AD carry taking 25 minutes to build Infinity Edge. Why? Because I prioritize my Infinity Edge and get a little bit of life steal. Uh, pretty much builds are cookie cutter for uh, for any type of. Thing. Now, I did miss my ultimate, but watch this. Shaco decides he wanted to stick around. Here it comes. Bam. Ended up getting it. But I thought Graves was my friend. I'm not going to lie. I just wanted to be friends with Graves, and he didn't want to be my friend, and that's about what happened. But I pull off a double kill, so I'm not complaining. Yeah. But that was totally my derp. I was more focused on watching that ult and watching Shaco's positioning to try to get it to come back on Shaco. Which is another part of Draven's ult. Using Draven's ult really good. But, uh... Generally, I miss more than I hit. Not gonna lie. I have some pretty good hits on every once in a blue moon. But, yeah. I wouldn't recommend Gra or Graves. Oh, God. Draven's ult for farming. Because it just, uh... It's, it's an awesome ult, you know? You can do major things with that ult. Now, here you go. Here's the surrender vote. So, uh, yeah, this was my first commentary in a while. So, uh, I am glad to be back. I'm going to be posting a couple more of these up. And I'm going to be trying to be posting at least a couple more of these a week. And, as always, like I told you guys at the beginning of this video, I'm going to be changing my commentary style up uh, video per video, you know? Just trying to freshen it up 
Uh, always leave me feedback. Always leave me comments. I mean, it just it helps so much in developing my commentary style and just getting a feel for what you guys like. Because really, it's about you, the viewers. You know, I I enjoy making commentary, and I really do. It's like a passion of mine that I just love to do. So uh, definitely hit me up with some feedback and let me know what you guys think. Uh, thanks for watching this video, and be sure to check out my other commentaries coming shortly.